So when I was a kid, um, I didn't know any better. For a good time, I drank alcohol. And uh, I'd get drunk and I'd fall asleep. And because the alcohol is very dehydrating, I'd feel dehydrated when I went to sleep. I'd have these dreams because my body needed water so desperately. I'd have dreams that I was, uh, you know, clawing and scratching trying to get some water. Um, and I would work really hard to try to get water because I really needed it. My body actually needed the water. And so sometimes in these dreams, it's like a re reoccurring dream I had every time I got drunk. I had this dream of trying to get, trying to go for some water, yeah. And I'd, I'd find, I'd get a pitcher of water or something, and I, in my dream, I'd pour it in my mouth. And and it, the strangest thing happened is that I would be drinking the mental water, you know, it doesn't really exist because it's in my dream. And it would go down my throat, and I wouldn't feel the slightest amount of satisfaction that a person feels when he drinks water, you know. It was like a type of torture, a type of, like a hell that... Can you imagine you're you're so thirsty and then you go to drink water and then it doesn't do anything for you? Well, that was the experience that I had. Now, in this world, people are thirsting for love, thirsting for happiness, thirsting for pleasure. And they go to get the things that they think will make them happy. And they um, dive into it. You know, They really go for it. They work so hard to try to become famous or to try to get the girl or to try to um, achieve one thing or another in this world. And what happens is when they get there, they experience emptiness. What they thought they were going to get is just not there. So um, this is due to the fact that um, we are spiritual. The, the the living beings, us, the living beings inside the body, are actually spirit souls. And in order to feel satisfaction, the spirit soul needs to be linked up with the supreme soul, with God. This is yoga. This is the purpose of yoga. It's to actually experience pleasure, experience satisfaction. You know. So, you know, people think of mantra meditation, or they think of spiritual life, as uh, something that is. Um, illusory something that it doesn't really exist but actually and the reason is because they, they they can't see it you know but you can see a beautiful woman you can see money you know and once you get it you can touch it but it doesn't satisfy your soul it doesn't satisfy your heart so even though it appears real it's actually not real it's just it's an illusion what you think you're going to get it doesn't really exist. So the mantra is meant to wake you up from your sleep-like state. It's it's meant to take you out of illusion. You know, sometimes people go to meditation classes and they think, I'm going to go into a trance. But they don't know. They're already in a trance. Drinking stuff that's not quenching their thirst. You see? You drink fame. You drink sensual pleasure. But it doesn't satisfy the um, parched, your parched heart that needs liquid nectar to be satisfied, you see. Needs spiritual nectar, spiritual happiness. So, uh, if, so this is the purpose of meditation, is to actually feel, actually experience real pleasure, real happiness. Just because you can't see something doesn't mean it doesn't exist, you know? And just because you see something doesn't mean it exists. It may appear to exist, but from our experience, from trying, from when we dive, dive into the mirage and we experience nothing but a mouthful of sand, It should, it should, it should be like a clue to, you know, like a little glitch, like something that it should tell us that, you know, it appeared real, but it actually wasn't. So then, by logic, 
um, you can see that it's possible that something can uh, appear to be not real, but yet be real.